be there. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, got it. Got me going some pain right now. Woo. Today is day two of the Linux Upskill Challenge. So today we're going to get into some basic navigation. Today we have three tasks. We're going to navigate the file system, create files and directories. We're going to understand what RTFM means. To wrap it up, we're going to perform an administration task that is customize our prompt. We are already connected to our server. Where am I? in the file system. Unix and Linux file system follow a hierarchy standard. Independently from the actual hardware, we start with slash as our root directory and everything in our system is under that directory. There are a few standard directories like slash bing for binaries, slash boot for the boot configuration, slash dev for the devices, slash lib for libraries, and one of the uh, directories you're going to spend most of your time in is slash home. How do we know which directory I'm in when I log in? We use the command pwd. There is print working directory. We are the slash home slash ubuntu. But I want to check other directories in my file system. Use cd, as in change directory, to go to slash bin, for example. Now, if I go with pwd, I'm slash b now. cd slash proc. I'm in proc now. You see that I'm using the full path for the directory I want to be in. cd dash etc dash init d. This is the full path. It's the same thing if I did cd slash etc and then cd init d. But there are f a few ways to go from one directory to another without having to always use the full path. There's one thing that is the relative path that I just did because I know that init.d is inside etc. But if I want to get back to my home directory, I could use cd home ubuntu, but I could also use tilde. I'm back to home ubuntu. If I want to get back to the directory I was working previously, I can use cd dash. It's going to get me back to that point I was before. Let's see, I'm now in etc.init. I want to get back, f I want to go from init.d to etc. Instead of just using cd slash etc, I could just use dot dot, that is directory above in the hierarchy. What I'm showing here is there is a few ways to work between directories and there is one little thing that is it's a big help on that navigation that are environment variables. If I'm going to cd tilde, what I'm actually doing is going to cd variable home. If I'm going back to the uh, slash etc, I can use cd dash or I can use cd the variable old pw and I'm back there. Uh, where can I uh, found all these environment variables? If I print inf, there's a lot. One of the things that we are using, old pwd. This is going to change every time I change directories. This is my home directory. So all this information is crucial to uh, navigate the file system. Other comment that is very used is the ls. ls is list files. This is everything that is inside the directory slash etc. If I use, there's a, a few ways that we can use ls. So ls, I want to present this list in, uh, in, in the form of a list. I can use l. We have more information. This is a, a detailed list. This number is actually the size of the uh, file. Remember from yesterday, basically everything that uses an H can give me a human readable version of that. So ls-h 
L I can use everything together as a parameter or I can use it separately it works the same there are a few files that you cannot see but they are there they're the hidden files I can see that using the dash A there isn't much there's one that is everything that starts with a dot is a hidden file so we can jump to our admin task that is to customize our prompt for everything that we did here you probably noticed that every time I change my directory this little guy here also changed if you don't like to see all of this in your prompt of comment this is highly customizable and there's a bunch of different ways to do this I'll link a video on how to do that but I'm going to show you uh, the basics remember the environment variables they are used here you can use export ps1 it means that is the prompt shell one that is the one that we're seeing equal double quotes the minimalistic prompt that is just the dollar sign the dollar sign is a special character in this in the prompt configuration is going to show a dollar sign when you're with a Hegler user and it's going to show a pound sign when you're using root. I'm going to learn more about that tomorrow. All the changes that I did here are not permanent. They're not saved in a config file. So if I I don't know what I did, I don't know how to fix this, I can all exit and enter again and we're back to the original. So the first task that is navigate the file system we did that the admin task for the day that is to customize our prompt is also done so task two create files and directories we use make directory that's mk dear test I want to create a file I could create a file as a result of using a program using another another common but I can just create a empty file with touch file and or a directory so let's say that I want file to be inside this new directory I created I can use MV for moving file to test file is no longer here in the home directory let's change directory enter test and give an ls files up here is also used to rename files is not only to move files I can rename a file so I'm going to change file to my first file here we are this is the new name of the file I want to copy this file cp copy my first file my second file we have two files now rm as in remove my first file now I want to delete the second file as well my second we have nothing here so let's get back to the to the parent directory dot dot we're back on I want to remove I want to delete this directory test rm dear remove dear test we no longer have a test but this command only works in an empty directory okay second task is completed we created files and directories now we're going to learn what RTFM means it means read the manual every time you see something that you don't understand there is a documentation a manual for each command that you can use in a Linux environment this is from a different era of not having internet <laughs> or not having that much internet as we have now there were the discussion lists there were by email where people would ask questions and sometimes they were very basic questions that could be answered by just reading the manual so read the manual <laughs> I can't read. That is one main resource of documentation. There is manual, men for manual, ls. The documentation, as I say, all, a for all, do not ignore entries starting with, with a dot. H for human readable. L, use a long listing format. It's written. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. So I'm using CP. To copy I said there are other ways to copy so what CP does copy files and directories the signature of the the comment 
I can use with options, a source, and a destination. So, learn to read the manual. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Other command you can use for documentation is more of a list of reference, and I like to use that a lot, is apropos. And then I have to give one uh, parameter that is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for list. All the programs or the comments that involve something about list. We have ls, that's the one that we use it, that list directory contents. There's ls USB that lists USB devices. If I want to know if I have a program that can deal with network, I can use a apropos, it's going to show up here. I want uh, print network connections, routing tables, netstat, the one that we used it yesterday. So apropos is a, is a good way to list if I already have something in my, my system that can do something that I'm looking for. If you're not really patient to read the entire manual on a man file, tldr and is going to read basically the man file and it's going to give you a summary. It's, you see it's <laughs> a lot shorter than the, the, the main file. So that's it folks. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching and good studies. See you tomorrow.